don't give up hope because you never know what will happen tomorrow. That was the last bit of advice that I can remember my dad, Earl Webster, giving me before he passed away in 2005. And since today would have been his birthday, I want to make this video to honor him. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're new, I'm Amanda. Welcome to the channel where we are all about shattering the mental health stigma. If you haven't already, please make sure you make sweet, sweet love to you that subscribe button. Give the bell a few kisses so you're not missing any of this content designed to help you with your mental health or help you help someone else. Typically when I do a reaction unless otherwise mentioned, I go in completely blind. So I don't know anything about the theme or the lyrics, but because of previous videos I made where I mentioned my dad being a Vietnam veteran, I had several people suggest the song Into the Fire by Sabaton. I had done a couple Sabaton reactions in the past. Uh, several people suggested this song because uh, it is about Vietnam. So I do know that it's about Vietnam, but that's the only thing I know about it. And as a kid, I didn't really know what Vietnam was about. I didn't know what being a veteran of the specific war meant. But as I got older, I took it for myself to do research and to listen to people's stories because my dad didn't really talk about it in his life. Now I know why. And I've just been really interested in, in learning and expanding and maybe understanding my dad and that part of his life. So Into the Fire by Sabaton, this is for you, Daddy. I love that there's a lizard there because my dad rescued iguanas and I always attach lizards to him now when I see them. So it's kind of interesting that that was in this video that I'm doing for him. But this guy is in a foxhole, which is probably what he typically calls his bed at this time in his life. And the killer instinct that has been implanted into this soldier is taking over and an ambush. He didn't see it coming. It puts him at a disadvantage, but even if he knows he's going to die, he wants to make the enemy earn it. He wants to take out as many of them as possible on his own way out. And the survival instinct of a trained killer would be fiercer and more precise than that of the average person because it wouldn't be tainted by this intense anxiety, or at least by as intense of an anxiety that the average person would experience. And I imagine that this would lead it to being far more consuming as the mind has nothing to distract it. So I imagine when that darkness settles in, it's a lot more consuming than what the average person would experience. Now I'm ready to strike. A creature of the night. Into the fire. The flame of napalm strike. Uh. I'm in charge, pieces everywhere Overrun, get older, ask, try, condemn us all to burn Lay fall from above, burning friend and foe Chaos on the battlefield, the jungles on fire This place, it's driving me insane Lay fall, it's burning us all This fight, no man can live to tell Within me, my blood 
Fun fact, napalm isn't one specific concoction. Uh, people think that it's a specific mixture, but it's any petrochemical that has been thickened by other chemicals to make it burn hotter. For reference, water boils about 212 degrees, I believe, but napalm can get up to over 2000, so it can heat up to over 2000 degrees. But napalm is not to be confused with Agent Orange, as many people confuse the two. It's typically used to, uh, to eradicate larger concentrations of the enemy, but unfortunately it tends to have a lot of casualties, an especially high number of casualties. And unfortunately, napalm had an almost 100% fertility, uh, not fertility rate, fatality rate uh, from, from what I remember. Here it sounds like his higher up was taken out and he knew he was going to lose, so he gave the he gave his position to his comrades to be struck so that at least the enemy suffers a massive loss as well. All ready to strike. The creature of the night. Into the fire. The flame of napalm strike. You know, the giveaway that this is about uh, Nam is the VC, and I'm so glad that it had that, that description at the beginning that reminded me that that stands for Viet Cong, because I probably would not have remembered that specific detail, but uh, Vietnam wasn't the first to use napalm. Uh, but it was the first time that the public had any real awareness of it. I believe Korea used napalm. I don't know uh, what other wars used it in warfare, but I, I do remember that uh, Korea was amidst them and that Vietnam was not the first, but people started becoming more aware of it uh, during that time. But this man's fire went from this metaphorical drive to a physical burning. And to be honest, I, I really can think of fewer more atrocious ways to die and to think that these men willingly stepped onto a battlefield of physical and psychological torture and they were ridiculed and spit on and called unfathomable names because of impossible choices that they were faced with physically makes me ill. They were faced with these impossible choices in a literal hellscape and were still torn apart, shredded by the very people that they were trying to serve and help and protect. And that makes me physically ill to my stomach. Um, the thing that I really liked, and I don't know, uh, the, the quiet choir in the background, there's just this very, very, very subtle kind of choir sound. And I take that as the angels calling them home and accepting them and standing by them. I know that those men were hated and there are still many people who look down on our military and our soldiers. And perhaps worst of all, I know that there are many that hate themselves and I can't begin to imagine the positions that they were put into um, or the underbelly of humanity that they were cursed to bear witness to. And I just need any veteran listening to this right now to hear what I'm about to say. If there is 
some supernatural judicial system, then I, I don't believe that the act of killing alone condemns a soul. A lack of remorse does that. And if you're feeling guilt, if you're struggling to accept what you had to do, if you are feeling, then that in and of itself is indicative that these acts weren't of malice or ignorance. And sometimes we're faced with choices that either outcome is absolutely horrifying, but you analyzed your options and you chose what was best for the greatest amount of people. And no, you can't unsee your nightmares, unfortunately. I wish that I could just erase those all because you don't deserve to have them. And you can't, you can't take back what has happened, but you can choose to live your life in honor of the ones lost. And you can teach better ways to the world based on your own experience. And you can live in love instead of hate. And you can do all of these things that the circumstances tried to steal from you. Because if you lose your battle, that means the enemy still wins. And pardon my French, fuck that. I, none of us want the enemy to win. And that's why we have to keep fighting. We have to keep fighting so that they don't. We have to keep fighting to honor the people we lost. And we have to keep fighting because we deserve better. You deserve better, regardless of what you've done or what you've went through. It's where your heart is now and what you do moving forward. And it's, it's difficult for me to really watch this because with my dad uh, in my center of focus, obviously it's easy for me to put his face on the face of these soldiers that are having to face this, um, having to deal with this. And it's just so mind-numbingly overwhelming to me to think that my dad could have died in this horrific way. This, this wonderful man so full of wisdom and so full of love could have died in this absolutely horrific or variety of horrific ways. And all these soldiers are someone's dad or someone's son or someone's brother or someone's friend. And it's, it's devastating to, to think about the loss and to think about what they had to sacrifice, some of them the ultimate sacrifice. And I just want to say that I appreciate the sacrifice. My dad used to say that he felt disposable when he came home. And I, I've seen that word uh, used in quite a few of my reaction videos regarding uh, military, regarding war. And I just need you to know that you are not disposable. You are lovable. You are worthy of happiness and worthy of a fulfilling and peaceful life, regardless of what you have been through. And I, I genuinely believe that you can find that healing. It's just not always easy, um, especially in cases like this, but you do deserve it. You deserve it again to prove the enemy wrong. You deserve it for those lives that can't go on. You deserve to live yours in the fullest for them and for yourself, because again, you do deserve to find that. And I always say, leave your stories here in the comments, good, bad, and crazy. And in this case, horrific. Uh, I know that a lot of soldiers are scared to talk about what they've been through because they're afraid that it's going to traumatize someone else. And I just want to let you know, I'm putting myself out there. I know what I'm asking for. I know what I'm getting myself into when I, when I, when I put this offer out there. But I want you to know you can get this out of your head here in the comments. Don't hold those things inside. These nightmares that are, that are, inflicting themselves upon you, you don't have to keep them inside. You can share them here. You can share them with us. Let us take part of that burden. Let us take some of that off of you and we will hold space for you and love you and see you for the human you are and see your heart. So please make sure you're sharing your stories here in the comments, whether they're military related or not. That's how we shatter the mental health stigma. And this is a huge part of it. Uh, those that have served really are, are, hand up a lot more uh, mental health struggles than the average person. And they deserve to have places to go to talk. They deserve to have honor and respect. And I just want you to know that I see you and I appreciate the sacrifices you and your fellow soldiers made for me to keep 
my family and my country safe. So thank you. And thank you to my dad who was amidst those. I, I hope that I did good in honoring him today. Uh, I, I'd love to share more memories of my parents at some point because I do think that they had a lot of wisdom to share with the world. And I often encourage people uh, who've lost someone to share their loved one's wisdom and help keep them alive. So today is just keeping him and his memory alive. But share your stories, give this video a thumbs up, share it. I would really appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me uh, to help honor my dad today and spread his message and his wisdom even further. I love you guys so, so, so much. Mwah.